Hi, my name is Leandro Facchinetti, and in this video, I want to talk to you about a project of mine called A Watch is a Watch. It's a watch face for my watch. It's the Garmin Forerunner 45S. And in this video, I want to talk to you about what the watch face looks like, how you can get it on your watch if you want to use it. And also, I'll go into the code for it, and I'll even show you how to install the developer tools so that you can compile the code for yourself and make changes or start your own watch face or app for Garmin watches. So this is what the watch face looks like. It's pretty simple, just the date, the time, the day of the week and the battery status. And that is pretty simple. That's what a watch is supposed to do. That's why the project is called A Watch is a Watch. But if you compare that to the watch faces that come with the watch, or even the ones that you find on the app store, which is called the Connect IQ, you'll see that this is much better in my opinion, because this is what the default watch faces look like. They are all hard to read when the lighting conditions aren't great, or they contain much more data than you would actually want. For instance, your heart rate, you don't need to see all these all the time. So this is just what you need in a very easy to read way. If you liked the watch face and you want to get it on your device, all you have to do is plug it in via USB and then on your computer, your watch is going to show up as a new device. You can come here under Garmin and apps and drag and drop the file that is the watch face. You can find the link to download this file in the description below. Now you eject the watch and then on the watch to switch to the new watch face, you hold this button, come here to watch face and scroll down. The last watch face will be the new one you just installed. And then you can confirm with this button. Now let's take a look at the code that actually makes this all work. Here is a project that I created using the Connect IQ tools that we'll look at how to install them later in the appendix of the video. But most of the project was just the files that were created by this generator. I didn't change most of them. So the manifest.xml and the monkey.jungle, they are all files that were generated for me. And then there is this file that represents the starting point for the app. It was also generated mostly by this generator and I didn't think, I don't think that I touched this file all that much, it just initializes the app and registers the watch face. And that is it for this file. The bulk of the work is done by this other file, which is a view. And in this file, I load the layout that represents where things should be on the watch face. So let's take a look at this with the simulator running the watch face and the layout file side by side. So here in the main view, we are loading this layout using the um, watch face ID. And this incantation was generated for me by the generator, but this description was not. So here in the layout file, it's a plain XML file and it's just describing the text fields and where they should be, but not the contents of the text field. That's going to be here below. So this is just saying there should be a text area here on the screen of the watch. So I have several labels. They, are, they have different identifiers and they have specific positions. And I guess that's the main reason why I did not put this watch on the Connect IQ store. I just developed this for myself and I didn't want to make sure that it would work in all devices. I didn't test on any other device besides my own. And I am not sure that these values would work with any other device. So what I did is just, I ran the simulator and I played with the values and then I transferred the watch face to the watch as uh, I showed you before to, to, to test that everything was in the right place. But I never, actually played with the values to see if they would work with other screen sizes and other screen proportions and dimensions. So it's just hard coded the values that made this work. And I can also set the font size. And it's funny that the font size is represented by spiciness, which is a fun thing. The developer tools for Garmin watches are kind of 
fun to work with. The documentation is kind of funny. And there are small quirks like this. And then there is the justification where the text should appear, which is always on the center, except for this little guy, for the seconds. I wanted it to align here, so I, I wanted it to justify to the left. And that's all there is to this XML file. It's just describing where things should appear on the screen, but it's not saying what should appear in those text fields. So that's what comes next here. In this part, of the, the onUpdate function, this is a function that is called every time the screen is going to refresh, which means every second here in this simulator. And what I do here is to get the date and the system stats, which is the battery life in this case. I want to show the battery life here. So I get the date and I find each of these labels that I created here by the identifier. So for instance, here date matches this date and I set the text. So this is when I actually put the date here with this date formatting thing. And this is pretty standard. It's what you would find in other programming languages. So I just grab the date and I tell it to format that string into a number of four digits. This language with percent signs and the number four and D, that's a language that is used in many programming languages to format strings. And that's the same thing I do for most fields, the date, the hours, the seconds, the day of the week. There is a trick here that I didn't want to show the date of the week with just sun, for instance. I wanted to show Sunday. So there was no way for me to grab that automatically from the API. And instead I had to hard code the days of the week. And initially I had a bug here. I forgot to subtract one from the day of the week because I thought the day of the week would be from zero to six. It's actually from one to seven. So my watch would show the right day of the week except on Saturdays. <laughs> but I eventually fixed that. And most fields just work this way. The battery life, it works this other way. I'm getting the data from the system stats, but the principle is similar. Now, there are a few quirks that you need to be aware of. The first is this battery thing, at least on my device, it's not super precise. It doesn't show a percentage other than 100%. 80%, 60, 40, and I guess 20, and I guess 1%, not, not 0%, but 1%, and that's when the battery is about to die. So it's not super precise, but it's good enough for me to know that I need to recharge the device. And the biggest quirk has to do with the seconds. When I showed you in the device, you might have noticed that you couldn't see the seconds. And that's because when you're developing your own watch face, and this is not a limitation that occurs with the default watch faces that come with the watch, but when you're developing your own watch face, the watch wants to preserve energy and running your own code can deplete the battery faster. So they limit the amount of times that you can refresh the screen. So when you are running your own watch face, you can only update the screen once every minute. And that's why you don't see the seconds hand here because it's only refreshing every minute. But when the device thinks that you are looking at it, when it has your focus, your attention, then it's going to show you the seconds hand. And that usually happens when you lift the watch and you just lift your wrist and you look at the watch, it's going to detect that movement with the accelerometer in the device and it's going to show you the seconds hand because it will change the status, the, the way that the code works, it will let you update the screen every second. Another way to trigger this is to just move out of this screen and then back in again. And then you can see the seconds here, but only for a little while. After a few seconds, I guess 10 seconds, it will stop showing again. And that's because it entered into this other state, this sleeping state. So let's look at the code and understand how this works in the code. So I have this variable here called is awake that I have to manage. And that variable is going to remember if I am in this awake state in which I can update the screen every second, or if I am sleeping and I can only update the screen every minute. So I have to do this management myself. So when I first 
load the watch face. Then I am awake and I can update the screen every second. Also, when the person lifted their arm or when they switched to a different screen and back into the main watch face, then I am also in this awake state. But after a few seconds of inactivity, I have to go into this sleep state and I just keep, this, keep track of this information in the is awake variable. And then here in the on update, when I am actually updating the screen, I check, am I awake or not? If I am awake, then I'm updating every second, so I will show the seconds. Otherwise, I will set the seconds field on the interface to be the empty string, which effectively shuts off this part of the screen. And that's not something that you can see here on the simulator. There may be some way to simulate going to sleep, but I didn't actually test this on the simulator. I just tested it on the device. And that's a quirk that you need to be, to be aware of when you're designing your watch face. There are some things that you cannot do every second unless you are Garmin and you are working with the native thing that is not available to third-party developers. And that is it. That is the entire code base for a watch face. It's not rocket science developing a watch face for a Garmin watch. And now for this last section of the video, let's look at how to set everything up if you want to run and compile the project on your own machine, or if you want to just get started with developing for the Garmin watch yourself on a completely different watch face or a completely different app. First thing you have to do is to go to the Garmin developer website, which is linked in the description below, and download the SDK manager. Then you install the app by dragging and dropping it into somewhere you can find it and you run it. Next, you install the SDK, which is the compiler, the tools to work with the programming language that we looked at before, and you set that SDK as the current SDK. And next, you download the emulator for the device in which you are going to work. And in my case, I have a Forerunner 45S, which is not listed here, so I'm going to download the next closest thing, which is the Forerunner 45. And now you're good to go. You can close this and install both Java and the IDE, which is Eclipse for Java. And there are different ways to do this. On the Mac, the simplest is to just use Cask. Now that the installation is over, let's open Eclipse, use the default workspace and install the Eclipse tools to work with XML. Go to help and install new software. On this dropdown, select to work with all available sites and look for XML. Then down here in the end of the list, you'll find this tool. Comes with the web, XML and Java EE and that's what you install. Restart Eclipse. Go back into help and install new software. And this time we are going to install the tools to work with Garmin watches and the support for that in Eclipse, which we are going to call Garmin. And the location for it, we can grab from the same website where we found the SDK. Click on add and then install the, connect, the support for Connect IQ within Eclipse. Restart Eclipse again and switch to the perspective, which is more appropriate for developing for Connect IQ. So we go to Window and Perspective and open another perspective, which is the Connect IQ perspective. And then it appears right here. We can switch to it and we'll see things like the Project Explorer and the console. Next, let's open the A Watch is a Watch project in Eclipse. We come here to File and Import from a git source, select clone URI. The URI will be in the description below. And then you just click on next and next, you're, you're good to go. And the last thing you have to do is to create a signing key. You can see here that it's complaining about the lack of a signing key. So to do that, we are going to go into preferences, find connect IQ and compiler and generate a developer key. Now we are ready to compile the project, see it running on the simulator and also build the file that we can transfer to the watch. Let's first see it running on the simulator. Let's click here on the run button on run configurations, 
create a new configuration based on the Connect IQ app. And we can leave the defaults here because we only installed one version of the SDK and one target device back when we looked at the SDK manager. So the configuration is good. And when you click on run, it takes a while, but then you see the simulator on the screen. Next, let's look at how we can compile the project to the actual device. We come here to the Connect IQ menu and build for device. I'll leave the defaults here because same story. I only have one version of the watch installed and one SDK. So I can just click on finish and a file will be produced in this directory. That is the file that we can transfer to the watch and see it running on the actual device. And that's all there is to it. Now you are able to install everything you need to get started with developing for Garmin watches. You can run the A Watch is a Watch project and you can start developing your own awesome watch face. Thanks for watching this video.